Well, here we are. It's June 25th, Christopher Schorff is gone, and Brian Reed is in charge of Halo Escalation. So, the big question. How did he do? Well, not bad, really. It's been eight months since the Didex attack on Earth, and New Phoenix is no longer under quarantine. The comic opens with a little backstory about Spartan Thorn, and for people who like little tidbits of information, this is absolutely great. The comic starts with Thorn talking about his childhood. We know he was born in New Phoenix, but he might have been a true military brat during his early years, since the comic states that Thorn hated Earth, finding it to be, quote-unquote, too built up, too old. Based on that, he must have been on other planets in his lifetime. Add to that that his grandfather wanted Thorn to learn about his mother's homeworld, and it seems pretty clear that Thorn was raised off-world. The first pages, along with the aforementioned narration, features an eight-year-old Thorn giving a report on the city of New Phoenix, which is apparently made up of modern-day Phoenix and Flagstaff. This falls in line with what we've learned about 26th century Earth, such as the formation of the Greater Chicago Industrial Zone, a zone that makes up much of the former states of Illinois, Wisconsin, and Indiana. Included with this presentation is something of a map showing how the U.S., and really all of North America, now known as the United Republic of North America, has changed over the centuries. All interesting, especially for me, but let's move on. On the same day as this presentation, Thorne finds out from his grandfather, oh, did I mention that Thorne lived with his maternal grandparents? That his parents are dead. Both of his parents were army officers and had been stationed on the colony of Alluvian. Hooray, another new colony! Sadly, they were unlucky enough to be there when the Covenant showed up to glass it. Oh. I guess not so, yay. Flash forward to the present. In orbit, Thorn and Majestic have been spending a week on board Oaxaca Station as Infinity is undergoing repairs. With New Phoenix being reopened and being so close to home, Thorn is having nightmares. The dreams start out with his grandmother teaching him to play violin. Suddenly, Thorn is grown up and an orange glow is seen outside of the house windows. The dream becomes a nightmare with Thorn only able to watch as his grandmother and all the citizens of New Phoenix are composed. And now for a bit of our bitching. What the hell is up with this scene? Thorn just looks plain awkward, which sucks because the art was pretty solid up until this point. Anyway. Thorn is woken by Grant. Since it turns out neither of them can sleep, they decide to go for a walk. I guess they walk to the cafeteria? Anyway, Grant encourages Thorn to talk about his dreams and over some food, convinces Thorn to go to the reopening of New Phoenix, even offering to act as backup for him. We flash forward two days to March 24th, with the UAG President Ruth Sharat giving a speech concerning the incident at New Phoenix. President Sharat was first mentioned in Halo Glassland, so it's kind of interesting to actually see her. In the crowd, we can also see just how tall Grant and Thorne are compared to normal humans. I mean, we kind of knew this, they're Spartans, but it's still pretty funny to see. I also want to point out that the uniforms they're wearing seem to be based on those used at the Corbulo Academy of Military Science. Nothing very special, but just interesting. After the ceremony, Thorne takes Grant to his grandmother's house and starts showing her around. We get a couple fun Easter eggs as we pass through Thorne's room, including a hollow of him and his grandparents when he joined the army, and a Master Chief action figure. On the subject of the action figure, I have to say, I wish 343 would stop using the Chief's armor from Halo 4 when depicting his past forms. Use the classic Mark IV or Mark V or VI. Seriously, acknowledge these armors! <sighs> Also worthy of note is that the figure was purchased by his grandmother to celebrate Thorne's recruitment into the Spartan 4 program. This would seemingly contradict what Thorne said in Halo 4. So, Mr. Thorne, what interest is my research to you, specifically? I enlisted with the Spartans because... I was in the army a year before my family and friends were killed in New Phoenix. I always thought the Spartans were special. Now granted, Thorne doesn't actually say he joined the Spartans after the New Phoenix incident. It just implies that he joined because of the incident. Then again, this isn't the first time 343 is screwed with Thorne's origins. The Halo 4 Essential Visual Guide says that Thorne joined the UNSC in 2552, the earliest he could have joined is July, and somehow finished basic training in time for the Battle of Reach. This is all despite Spartan Ops saying that he had only been in the army a year before New Phoenix. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, as Thorne ventures out back, he finds where his grandmother had been during the attack. She had been outside, practicing her violin. Thorne immediately wants to leave. I mean, who wouldn't? But Grant convinces him to cherish the memories he has of this place. 
And indeed, Thorne does, sitting down to play the violin one last time. Flash forward three weeks and Thorne is doing much better, haunted only by the dreams of a talking couch named Steven. The issue ends with the Infinity jumping to coordinates unknown in four words that hint at what we all know is coming. Next issue, Master Chief. So overall I'd say the issue was pretty good, especially considering the whole thing is basically filler before we get into the next 72 hours story arc. Through the comic, we get little snippets of information, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, some insight into Thorne's past, and we finally put to rest the issue of New Phoenix. It also seems that 343 may be sowing the seeds of a relationship between Thorne and Grant. Can't say I'd be against it if that is indeed the case, but I might be reading into things. But perhaps most important of all, it seems that Brian Reed may do well with Escalation. I don't want to get too optimistic yet, but I do feel cautiously positive about future issues. Only time will tell if I'm right to do so. Before going, let's look forward again, this time to the recently revealed cover for Halo Escalation Issue 10. The cover features four Spartans, one of them being the Chief, the others unknowns. However, given the armor designs, it seems to hint at Blue Team making an appearance in this issue. We see what we presume to be Kelly with her EVA helmet, presumably Fred with the same helmet he had in Halo Legends. Alright, the great journey. Ends here. And what I can only guess to be Linda with a modified CIO or tracker helmet. Tracker would make more sense since the armor was made to track long distance targets. I can't say that I'm happy with the Spartans wearing the Chief's modified Mark VI armor, especially since the Halo 4 Essential Visual Guide said that Blue Team has been using baseline Mark VI, like we see in Halo 2 and 3, and its variants. It could just be a choice for the cover art, but I wouldn't be too surprised if this is how they looked, assuming this is Blue Team and assuming they actually show up in the issue. So, that about does it for Halo Escalation. It was a good read, so be sure to pick it up. I'll leave you with this last thought. Thorne may very well have killed his own grandmother during his tour on Requiem. Special thanks to Decepticon Cobra for that heartbreaker. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe share it around on whatever social media you choose. Your support is greatly appreciated. I cannot stress that enough. Thanks for watching.